getting paid to play at church. It's a sim simple <laughs> sentence, but it just, it just, it's very touchy. It's very touchy. It, and I just, I just heard certain people pick up their stones. They, they about to just start tossing it. So before you throw it, just listen to this, this aspect. I, I, I'm, I'll open up with this. Let's do it. Just, just listen, take, take this journey that paint, mm -hmm. I'm painting a picture for you. Mm -hmm. So we have a church like Transformation Church that has the means to bring on Ty Tribbett. And he comes over there and sings all the songs that you guys are familiar with. Right. Mm -hmm. There are some churches that can't really afford that. So mm -hmm. they have the choir learn it. So that mm -hmm. drummer and those musicians are learning these complicated albums for your church to come and enjoy it for free. But you paid Ty Tribbett and all of them. Matter of fact, let's go even deeper. You've bought their albums. <laughs> you've supported them. Yeah. You've paid the money to go yeah. hear them and to go see them. But when we are in our lab slaving, learning these songs verbatim, you get it for free. And then this is taking time out. I'm not, let's add this. Let's say I have a family and I'm doing this full time. Now I'm taking time on my day learning these songs. I got to go to rehearsal. I got to make sure that, as a matter of fact, I, I got to invest. I got to go get certain gear and stuff because there's mm -hmm. triggers on that song. So I got yeah. I got to get this stuff right. Yeah. And it's coming out of my pocket. <laughs> but then, uh, but mind you, like this, and it's, Let's add some more. I might have went to school for this. I got Keep a going. degree. Keep going. If I go to school to become a doctor, I'm 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 definitely not getting told, you know, that health insurance that you know you, you inject this needle to me like this. You doing this for God? You ain't doing this for the government. They, they you don't need that. That's not your money. <laughs> oh man, like that's. I'm Let's talk the, about it, bro. We don't we we done been blunt this entire podcast. Let's go. You Let's paying go. the cooks after service. You're buying their plates of food. And like <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're you're walking out with your plate of food you paid for. Oh God. But you know that is so powerful. That, that's just that's just a and and, and I, I say all this to say this because like uh see I, I i'm not gonna say no names but like just like you you got history with certain things like i've i've gotten fired from three churches in one sunday <laughs> <laughs> one of them one of them was because i asked for an extra 25 dollars because the 150 that i was getting paid went straight to gas because of how far the church was and I'm asking for an extra $25. And that day. We, they you know, fired you came. for that? Yeah. Just for you asking if you can get an extra $25 because you had to drive? Yep. I was on the phone. They, very confused. So you're asking for extra compensation for, but you're not doing any extra work? I'm like, the money you're giving me is going straight to gas. I have hmm. bills. I don't, I, I live in a house. <laughs> like, are you uh, like, but you know, that's, you know, that's, yeah, let's talk about it. I just, All right, let's talk I, about they, it. They left again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I'll start with this. It's all about heart posture for one, two, um, I, I believe that there is a, um, what's the word that I'm thinking of? God, give it to me. There's a certain, 
um, time and place for certain things. So for me, um, I will forever feel that what you feel you're worth is validated. Now you need to make sure you back it up, but that's neither here nor there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I do feel that um, if you're asking for a certain amount of dollars, it's because you feel that you're worth that. So I'll be 100. For me, I don't mind taking low pay gigs sometimes, but not all the time. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, you're not only paying for you to play, you're paying for my time. Mm -hmm. And the time that musicians take to ensure, like you said earlier, the time that musicians actually take, people really don't understand how much or how expensive a musician should be. And the reason why I say that is because the world does it. And if we're supposed to be as churches, if we're supposed to be the safe haven for what this world is supposed to be, and you can't even pay your musician for making all the stems that you had to make last night for doing three rehearsals, for doing three services, all for $125. The way that I see it is you expect me to sacrifice, right? What are you sacrificing? I feel that it should always, it should always go hand in hand. A lot of churches don't believe this. And that's okay, because at the end of the day, musician, the musician world, the mentality of it, even in the secular world, has dropped. Like, people don't take the value of what a musician really is to its top peak anymore. I remember um, it was this viral video of this drummer. I can't remember who it was. Um, he was in L.A. in a clinic, and he was talking about how musicians do not get paid what they used to get paid anymore yeah like, i saw that yeah yes mm -hmm. he was playing for michael jackson getting 70k then lionel richie was like 60k and then like it just kept going lower and lower but this was just to be with them for less than a year not even for a full year this is not like your salary this is just one person for a couple gigs for what six to eight months but now people can get that if they're doing a two-year tour i ain't gonna say that's what they're getting for real for real but mm -hmm. at the end of the day i really do believe that it's all about heart posture and it's all about um like for one it really is communication but a lot of people just really don't understand how much time that it takes for a musician to do what they're really doing and i have had to accept that on so many situations where it's like people have told me like i can't pay you what you want but i can't give you this the respect for that for me will make me say yes because for one the communication was was put to me up front so mm -hmm. at that point, it's up to me to say yes or no, whether or not I'm going to do it. And yep. the part the part that frustrates me that I feel like a lot of people have messed it up in the musician world for a lot of others is their commitment. If you say you're going to do this gig for one hundred and fifty dollars or twenty five dollars or free. Don't don't do a no call, no show. Because your word is bond. And I feel that churches specifically have gotten um, traumatized in that aspect. Like, hey, I can only pay you 150. And these are genuine people. Where it's just like, hey, I can only pay you 150. Can you do this? Yes. At that point, it's not their fault. It's yours. Because at the end of the they day, told you no matter. You, they, yeah. I get, yep. If the communication is there, there should never be an issue with complaining because at the end of the day, you gave your word. Your word is bond, especially for musicians. If you say yes before getting paid, like at that point, it's like, we're good. We're locked in. There's nothing else to be said. So I feel that it kind of goes hand in hand because like there are certain situations where people be like, hey, what are you charging 
for to record a song. I'll tell them my rate. Some people just don't respond. Some people will be like, okay, I can't pay that. Can we do this? And sometimes I may say yes. Sometimes I may say no. Because at the end of the day, like I know what my worth is and I'm always going to start there. But at the same time, my heart is not for the money. My heart is for the fact that I have a wife that is diagnosed with sickle cell that you're taking time away from on top of my two kids that are babies. And I live in a state with no help, no family, no nothing. Like Mm -hmm. brand new life just started, lived in Chicago all my life. So there are certain aspects of me because of my situation that I'm going to charge you for. And then there are just some people that it's just like, I'm about to, I'm about to break you off because I need you to do this whenever I need you to do it. And a lot of people do not have that mindset. It sucks, but like, I'll get, I'll, I'll be blunt and give one situation. I've never had this happen to me in a secular gig until then. The only time that I've ever had it happen to me was when COVID happened and I was going month to month with TC. They called me. Well, actually, no, that wasn't a, that wasn't that situation either, but it was still good money. But this was the first time this ever happened to me. And this changed my whole mindset about how I get paid. You can let the let the people know who TC is? Transformation Church. Okay, there you go. I literally thought you were talking about, you know, <laughs> this is an artist, TC. I just got no, 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 no. I'm, I'm going <laughs> to say who the artist is because he's good people. Um, okay. Shout out to my homie Rico Nichols. Um, yeah, shout out to Rico. He, yeah. he's, he's wanted to push me. Actually, no, I'll give y'all one better. Him... Rob Gruinger, they've been trying to get me on gigs in LA for God knows how long. I didn't know it, but like some of my homies were telling me like they really want want to have you work out here. But this was like right when I got the job with the church. Mm-hmm. So um I was I got called by Rico um to fill in for 24k golden. They came to me and told me I got a day rate of $600. I said, excuse me? <laughs> Including the flight. Mm. So that's a day rate by itself. I said, it, I, 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 I'll take the gig. I, <laughs> I learned 18 songs and didn't get all of them until the week before. I got, a, mm. I got half of them. And I had to learn that stuff. But I had the respect of them specifically because they did their part. I sacrificed, and even if it was last minute, they did their part. They, they communicated to me, like, hey, send this to this person so that you can be paid. It won't be immediately, but it will get paid this, and we need you to learn this many songs. And I learned them songs. I made sure to learn them songs because at the end of the day, like, the the sacrifice was met together. So I I I walked away with a crap ton of money on top of them paying for my um any anything that I had to spend money to work with them. My whole mindset was messed up. I'm like, yo. Now mind you, 24k golden is a big artist, but imagine a bigger artist. What are they giving? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like the mindset is different. And the crazy thing is they got cheaper. So I don't even want to imagine what they were really paying people back in the day. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it changed my mindset where it's like, if you want me to sacrifice and you want me, like, at that point, you can yell at me. You can go off on me for saying, <laughs> why didn't you learn this music? You have every <laughs> right. Yep, because yep. at the end of the day, the sacrifice was met and the expectation was not only um, given to me, but y'all made sure that I was insured. And that is a lot of the problems that I feel like a lot of people, not churches specifically, but like that, that's where it kind of like gets weird, where it's like at the end of the day, even if they're not sacrificing, if they give you the respect of giving it to you up front, and you say yes, stick with that. Because the the crazy thing is, and this is what I learned, 
is that if you're not, if you think that you're going to be faithful in a big gig and not faithful to a little one, your your heart and mindset is already messed up. You're going to F up the big gig. That's just how I see it. In some shape, form, or fashion, if you do not have the same respect for something little as big, you're going to mess something up. Better yet, it may not even mess up your gig. You might have messed up an opportunity from a spiritual side because of the mindset that you have. And that's where it kind of goes hand in hand for me, where it's like what I said earlier, it's all about the heart posture. If you say yes, go. If it's for free, like I'll give, I'll give y'all one. Um, I was doing these two gigs for um for my wife mm -hmm. and for a friend of mine. Um, well, I'm forgetting names right now, but one of them wasn't paying, and one of them was paying like one fifty, maybe two hundred. TC called me for the first time. Mm -hmm. They called me the night before. I was like, hey, we need you to fly out. No, it was the week of, but. It was still last minute. They called me and was like, hey, we need you to fly out to Tulsa and do this conference with us. I wanted to do it so bad. But my integrity of saying yes to somebody ensured that I got this job. Because I told them, I was like, hey, I would love to do it, but I already said yes to something. So if y'all tell me in advance the next time that y'all need me, I'm there. And that's exactly what they did. They respected it. And at the end of the day, everything worked out. I had a great time. I got paid well. They even asked me how much I wanted. I was just like, oh, I mean, I, 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 mean, I figured it was a big church. I was going to pay me a decent amount of money, and they did. So I, at that point, I'm just like, cool. You know what I'm saying? So it's like at the end of the day, like your heart posture with anything. Like I could have took that. I could have took that opportunity to play in an arena instead of play for these services and tell them last minute, y'all go out to find somebody else. But it's all about the hard posture. And that's something that I feel like a lot of people have an issue with is that they will cut something good off that is consistent for something that's big. Pause. Um, I mean, it was a long enough wait. <laughs> you got that Lord one. <laughs> 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 but yeah, that's that's my that's my mindset when it comes to um when it comes to just money, specifically about churches, but I, I really kind of just brought everything as a whole because I feel like a lot of people just don't know nothing about this stuff. And I don't know everything, but I do know a little. And I know that. It's a couple things that you need to consider. Make sure that your heart is right for anything that you do. Always make sure that if you say if you said yes, let your yes be yes and let your no be no. If you said yes and just disappear and, and be a no call no show, you're not gonna get trusted. And that in in the musician community, I have to say that type of stuff comes around very quickly and it travels far and fast. So if you want the big gig, make sure that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing to get to that place. Make sure that if you say yes to a storefront church, go faithfully. You know what I'm saying? And be on time. Don't matter whether it's a small gig or a big one. Like, Make sure that your heart posture is, I'm going to be on time. I'm going to make sure I know this music. I'm going to put my best foot forward. Like I, I did a show for a friend of mine um, for a festival, not the festival that we just did, but mm -hmm. some weeks before that. And I did it simply because I saw that she could actually like be great. Like she had dancers and everything. We ain't had no tracks the first gig that we did. I was like, yeah, we're never doing that again. I'm going to make the tracks for you and I'm going to give it to you for, and I'm going to do it for free. She ended up paying me more than what, what she was supposed to pay me. And that's simply because my heart posture, like there, you never know what could be happening. I'll give another situation. Uh, when I was playing for Taylor Bennett, um, he pulled me to the side one day and was like, hey, bro. And I wasn't making a lot of money with him. I was making $200 per show. He was like, bro, I just want to say I appreciate you. I see 
that you are always the first person to rehearsals, even when we're not doing anything, you're making sure that you're on your toes. You you make sure that you got everything right. You make sure I'm good, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to raise your pay to $100 more. Let me tell you something. That changed my whole life. Bro. Even though it was $300 every show, we were out three weeks out of the month, every month for a year and a half. Aside from still being able to go to church. Sometimes I miss church, but most of the time I was able to still make services. So I was making good money. I was fine with the $300. But at the end of the day, it's because of my heart posture that that changed. Then when COVID happened, they started going up to the thousands. Every show we did, $1,200, two grand. You know what I'm saying? And it's like because of my heart posture and because of how consistent I was when I was saying yes and when I was saying no, whether it was a big gig or a little gig, at the end of the day, if you stay consistent, not only will your life around you change, but like, bro, yeah. Yeah, that was. Tony, tell everybody. <laughs> but yeah, it's, um, uh, yeah, I just, I just, it's the, I just don't understand why this is such a t- a touchy subject when it's 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 very it's common sense like especially now where like his I should not be getting if I'm getting paid anything I should not be getting the same amount that I got when I was 12 playing for you guys now having bills and a family I I am like, 100% with that and it's and then it's then it's the well you shouldn't be doing this for money i'm like well nobody said that's a job y'all keep doing i will i will absolutely say that that is i'm just gonna say it that is a manipulative term Mm -hmm. yeah yeah because at the end of the day the money that you're making to fund your church you gonna say that about them when somebody calls you to, let's just be 100. Every pastor gets paid when they go somewhere. Yeah. Especially big names. Yeah. And, they ain't, and they ain't cheap at all. I hate to say it, but the value is not there for musicians no more. I said it earlier, but the value for musicians is not there. Somebody could go preach for 45 minutes and get $1,000 and nobody will ever have an issue with it. Ain't never because been to school, ain't got a doctorate nowhere. Just saw that you could make money doing this. Picked up the mic, turned on the Bible. We're not app. even finna go there. We not hey, even hey. finna go there. Hey, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen a pastor literally has kids. They, they, they. He ain't got a job, but they got, they got all the new iPhones. Who paying that bill? You don't have a job. <laughs> like what? Let me tell you that same bro. person. That same person. Let I'm not even going. Ooh. I'm about that's to turn real, into Cat bro, Williams. That's the, I'm about to like, yo, <laughs> yo. Bro, that it just it just goes back to what I was saying earlier, bro. The value of musicians is not there anymore, and I'm praying that it gets back to that point. But it also needs to be, um, it also needs to be some work done on musicians' part as well. Yeah, because, yeah. like I said earlier, like churches have tr- been traumatized to where they have paid somebody big money and they were getting mm-hmm. no results. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes it's even a thing of like people will kind of undermine what you're doing and want more. And it's like, I need to be, be yep. I need to be being paid more to do that. And yep. it's like, well, your heart ain't right. It's like, nah, like the same bills that you need to get paid. It's the same bills I need to get paid. And everybody's situation is different, which is why I say it comes back to your heart posture. If you're asking for $5,000 and it's not even that type of gig, that's your heart posture. Yeah, that's, if yep. you got kids, like my situation, wife, two kids, no help from family. Got a couple friends that we entrust with our kids. But at the end of the day, we are on our own. Mm -hmm. You cannot expect me to say, I'm going to take this $200 gig to do a two-hour two-hour concert while you about to be getting paid $1,500. At the end of the day, 
at the end of the day, it's all about the heart posture and the value. And the people that actually value you is going to pay you the real money, which is why a lot of musicians run to the secular gigs, because at the end of the day, they actually value what you're doing because they know how much it takes. Even if it isn't all the way up there, if they're giving you $500 to do a four, 45 minute gig, I feel like that's value. I'm about to say something that's going to shake up the internet. I Let's said I it. wasn't going to go Cat Williams, but Let's do it. A, we check did, this brother. out. This, je- this hit me uh, last week. I was talking to my brothers about this topic. And you just said something that, that perfect time to segue into it. Let's do it. You said that's why a lot of musicians go to the secular route. Mm-hmm. Listen to me carefully, people. If the church was paying the musicians their worth, most of the secular songs y'all preaching about wouldn't exist. Because they got all of that from the talented church musicians that had to leave because they could not afford to make a living with what you're giving them. I might, I, I might... I might add Cat Williams it, taking that truth. sip. I, I might have I hate, to do that. I hate to say it, but that is the absolute truth. And a lot of people get angry about that. And it's yep. like, what are you angry about? Like, you're not about to pay them what they're paying them. And then on top of that, to make it even worse, and it's not about this. But one thing that I have realized about the secular world is that they give the musicians some type of recognition. Churches don't do that. They want you to play and go. The secular world, they will give you a drum solo where it's Mm -hmm. just about you. Mm -hmm. They will recognize you. They will put your name out there. They might even put you on their Instagram for a second. Like I, like, I have recently been seeing a lot of artists, and this hasn't been a real thing all the time, but like I have seen artists actually want to get close with their, um, with their band. I'll give one, one prime example. Justin Bieber. Part of the reason why they are always there is because he values them. Aside from the pay that they're getting, and I know they're getting paid right. (laughs) He values them. He puts them on their social media. He talks about them all the time. He actually made it a consistent thing to where he's not just flying through musicians. That is family. Like, real family. They party together. They talk together. They live together. They laugh together. Like, that is a real thing. And it's that is one of the worst things that churches do not have is the relationship. Like, a lot of people don't know they pastors. Yeah. A lot of people don't know they pastors. I'm not asking you to invite everybody to your crib. I'm asking yeah. you to have a relationship with me. And a lot of the issues that the church has is that most people are having issues and they're not loving them through it or even trying to figure out if they got any issues. Nine times out of 10, they trying to figure it out so that it could be more drama and then kick you out. There, there's no, there's no real pastoring for musicians. Musicians is always in the background, not only, from a musical standpoint, from a spiritual standpoint, there is, I have been prayed for by very, very few people on drums. Stop everything they doing to come pray for me. I shout out to pastor YPJ. This is the first time I've ever, uh, no, this ain't the first time I heard him preach, but this is the first time that I figured out like, like I always thought he was a good preacher, but I knew he was a real man of God. This was an intimate uh, camp joint, um, like little getaway with the church that I went to. They invited Pastor YPJ. He preached, 
It was a great word. He started praying over people. I'm on an electric kit, just playing, just flowing while they're doing everything they're doing. Stop everything he was doing to come over there and talk to me and pray over me for 10 to 15 minutes. Took his time. Mm. And everything that he said was spot on. There are not a lot of pastors that actually take time to do that. To this day, I call him Unc. He'll respond to my DMs. He's a pastor that I barely know as a person. But the fact that I can actually, like, talk to him. Like, if I came to him with issues, I really feel like he would actually talk me through it. Because at the end of the day, like, that moment that he took time to actually, like, pour into me was everything that I needed to know that I could trust him. And a lot of musicians cannot trust their pastors. Because at the end of the day, they don't know them. They don't have no real value in them. And they show it. And it's not just from money, but it has everything to do with everything else. Because a lot of churches have that issue where they think, like, it's just supposed to be you come in and play and be done. And then they act and all confused while your life is jacked up. Everybody's, yeah. life is, everybody's life is jacked up just as much as yours is. You just don't want to say it. And it's not publicized. But at the end of the day, everybody got issues. We all was born on this earth with sin. Jesus died on the cross for the very sin that you're about to commit in five minutes. And at the end of the day, that is a lot of musicians' issue. They don't have no real accountability. They don't have no real love around them. People don't even know how to receive love anymore because there is no type of love given to anyone for them to understand what it looks like. Yeah. And I feel like that is the lack that not only musicians, but really just our generation has just been dealing with for a very long time now. Like, but just going back to musicians, like, I feel that that's the reason why people go to the secular world. It may not even be to be what they actually need, but they're being given some type of love. And that's all they, and that's all they're going to take it. Because at the end of the day, we were never created to be alone. God literally created Adam and looked at him and was like, it's not good for a man to be alone and brought a companion, not just a female, but a companion. And at the end of the day, the way that I see it is as effed up and jacked up that their situation happened, they lived for a very long time and they were still together. Mm. Which means they were encouraging each other. Even through all of that, God was still loving them through everything. And I feel like that's why they were able to stay together for so long. Because they lived for, I can't remember what the Bible says. It was a long time. It wasn't, oh, no, uh, oh, it wasn't 100 years. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't 100 years. I just found that out. I was like, bro, <laughs> like these mods were living a thousand years? <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's, yeah. You know what I'm saying, bro? Like, I, I really do believe that, like, if we could get a hold of loving our musicians just as much as you're loving the people that's giving to you in front of you, like if that value was set, like you said, half of these musicians, half of these artists would not be doing secular music right now. Yeah. Yep. Chris Brown specifically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People have been saying this for a very long time. Like they're like 90% of these people, that are secular artists now, we're Christians. Like, it's, real talk. Yep. Yeah, it's... Uh, Ain't nobody gonna talk about it, though. Ain't nobody yeah, gonna talk about it. Gonna talk about it. That's, that's the next time. We eat two hours and 25 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Look, this is good this stuff. This is a good conversation, though.